if uh, x and uh, y are fields vector fields x y is not a vector field in general because it does not obey the Leibniz rule indeed let's compute x y on fg which means we first act on y and then with x <coughs> the Leibniz rule tells us that y of fg is fyg plus gyf then we use linearity and the Leibniz rule for x so we have xf xg plus f xfyg plus f xyg plus xg y f plus g x y f so the two contributions that would obey the Leibniz rule are those two underscored in red the other two don't and they don't cancel but they do cancel if you take the commutator that is a vector field because it satisfies the Leibniz rule and uh, it's easy to show it because it's, we just take the previous two the previous um, previous formula and subtract what we obtain by exchanging x and y and the sum of these two things you see is symmetric under the exchange of x and y so those two objects disappear and uh, the other two return the commutator of x and y so we have the Leibniz rule locally we can write x like this <coughs> y now we are in the same coordinate system so it's bi of x not bi of y as before and uh, what is uh, the commutator which we call z that will have certain coefficients which may we may call cix in the canonical basis d over dxi <coughs> and uh, 
it's easy to <coughs> calculate those coefficients. Just take a function f. <coughs> you have this expression but you also have this one which means x or y f <coughs> minus f uh, y of x f And that means AI D over the XI of BJ DF over D XJ minus <coughs> BI D over D XI AJ df over the xj <coughs> so when you um, use Leibniz rule you will see that the second derivatives of f cancel out and you remain with the what? <coughs> You remain with AI DB DXI J D over F over DXJ minus the same thing where you exchange B with A. So you can now drop F and the derivative and you can read the CI coefficients of Z. You have to change the name of the indices and you obtain this. are the properties of the commutator of two vector fields it's anti-symmetric obviously <coughs> it satisfies the Jacobi identity which means commutator of x with a commutator of yz plus cyclic cyclic permutations so xyz plus xyz that is equal to zero and it uh, well this is a consequence f x commutator y is equal to f times the commutator of x and y you can take f out a, a, a function f that multiplies a vector field out of the 
<coughs> commutator indeed to show this just act on another function g that will be equal to this minus y f x g um, yes absolutely not gonna take it out forgot the other term here Um, why? Because so you have to do to apply the Leibniz rule there, and you have um, y of f times x of g. Let me check if I wrote it. In. Y of f times x of g minus f times y x of g. Okay, so this is it. Not a very important rule, just an exercise you want, because this won't be used very much anyway. It's just a consequence of the others. Now, if A is an algebra, For example, we can consider the functions, the smooth functions on our manifold are an algebra, the set of smooth functions, because they can be summed and multiplied. And if you multiply two smooth functions, you get a smooth function. If A is an algebra, uh, a derivation D of A is a linear map D from the algebra to the algebra such that the Leibniz rule holds. For every A and B in capital A. <coughs> we can consider A equal to the set of C infinity smooth functions on the manifold M. Uh, but by the way, uh, what is uh, the transformation? Uh, how do you define a smooth manifold on the function m? You, you define it as a uh, in any open set. Note. f of x in a chart u with a certain coordinates <clears throat> and when you have the intersection of two charts so you have a change of coordinates uh, F changes 
as a scalar basically just change the coordinates in uh, and that is uh, that let's uh, let us uh, call it f prime or in the usual notation you can say Let's use the most common notation. So we say that is x prime of x, f prime of x prime, which is the function in the new chart, is equal to f of x. That's it. So in physics, that is a scalar. That is how you define a function on the manifold. So you can take uh, A as the algebra of smooth functions on the manifold, then and uh, uh, let x denote a vector field A smooth vector field, which is uh, an element of this space, as we said, because this is a space of smooth vector fields, then uh, it might be better to move this the other way, the other page. Here it is. Then the map that uh, sends f to xf is a derivation of the algebra. So derivations of the algebra are vector fields are the same thing. Conversely, every derivation of the algebra C infinity M is associated with one and only one vector field of chi infinity m. So derivations and vector fields are the same thing. Now we define the tangent bundle. Tangent bundle is the union of all tangent spaces for all points of the manifold. <clears throat> and this union can be given a topology, a structure of topological space, and actually topological manifold and uh, differentiable manifold. 
quite uh, easily because um, well it's sufficient to, to describe what happens in a sing in a single uh, open set and then it's easy how to patch them together for more complicated manifold so let's start with uh, a manifold M that is just an open set of Rn So we have a coordinate system here a cover is can be made just by, by you itself <clears throat> okay coordinate system x1 xn And um, the tangent bundle is just U times Rn. Every tangent space, we let's recall every tangent space in every point is isomorphic to Rn. So we have one tangent space for every point and we obtain the Cartesian product of U times Rn. So it's very easy to give it a topology because every uh, subspace, every open subspace of U can be multiplied directly by Rn or by open subsets of Rn. Let's see <clears throat> what, um, how can we describe the points of this manifold in coordinates, our coordinate system. So first, uh, so <clears throat> it's like associating every point P with uh, uh, of U with what is called a fiber, which is in this case its own tangent space. So every point has a fiber, which means that for every point x1, xn. Uh, what is the dimension of Tu? It's a product, so you have n dimensions for U and n dimensions for Rn, 2n. So it must be described by 2n coordinates. The first n coordinates are the coordinates of the point, and the other n coordinates are the n coordinates that specify the vector, the vector of the tangent space. So let me call them A1, AN, and for convenience we can choose those A1, AN as those that gave this vector in the canonical base. A vector, as we know, is a derivation. There is a one-to-one -one correspondence, so just let's just describe the vector as a derivation in the canonical base of derivations d over dxi it's a linear combination like that we call the coefficients coordinates of the tangent space <clears throat> so um, this simple tangent bundle is described by these two n coordinates and uh, the first n tell you about the point P and varying AI with the others, you move along the fiber, so called. So, okay. This part is for tangent.
this part is for u. <clears throat> when what happens when you want to describe a manifold? Uh, you have to describe um, different open sets, and you have to tell to to explain what happens in the intersection uh, or when you change coordinates. So we know what happens when we change coordinates x1, xn will go into some new coordinates, whatever they are. We have to specify what happens under change of coordinates of these a1, an, but we know that already. Because <clears throat> that is given by this formula here with one caveat. Um, let me copy this one. Okay, so in the intersection <coughs> of two charts, we have coordinates. x1, xn, a1, an, and new coordinates y1, yn, b1, bn. <coughs> we also have a relation that tells us how to change coordinates in the space by the way the tangent space is called um, fiber and the open set here is called base it's like having a base and a lifting so you can define a base manifold for the tangent bundle and the base manifold is M in every patch you lift uh, fibers like that so we have a relation like this which is the change of coordinates for m and now you have to give a relation for the change of coordinates for those the relation between b and a because we want to define the tangent bundle as a topological manifold actually a differentiable manifold and that is the relation we found before That is the relation with the caveat that we do not have uh, a i and b a j and b i are not functional of x they are free because this is free totally free so we define it this way this so we add this transformation rule which is inherited by <coughs> uh, the one the change of coordinates here that is an overall change of coordinates which uh, which says that uh, y1 yn b1 bn are functions of x and a so y is just a function of x actually b is a function of x and a you see it's both x and a not just a so this is a change of coordinates in the tangent bundle and this is how you um, define it as a differentiable manifold because if you, if the um, manifold is 
inf smooth, infinitely differentiable. These functions are smooth, and these functions are smooth, and so this change of coordinates is always smooth, and so on and so forth. So the tangent bundle associated with a smooth manifold is a smooth manifold. Now, um, so we have uh, a base, and then in every point we have what we call fiber. You can consider a section. Or cross section of the bundle. What is it? It's a very simple thing because it means that instead of associating an entire space, the fiber, with every point, you associate an element of the tangent space, a specific one, with every point. So a section is what? Locally, it's something like this. For every point, you associate not the entire space, but one point. That is a vector field. A vector field is a section of the tangent band. And when you do that, you go back to the transformation rule for the vector fields, which is the one we use to define this. So here you obtain What? With these, you can build the derivation like this, and that is a derivation, so that is a vector field. So, a vector field is a section of the tangent bundle. for a section the formula we wrote becomes the correct transformation for vector fields becomes the correct So this is how we can uh, describe uh, vector fields. In, uh, uh, in a moment, probably we will not complete it today, but um, we 
can define also a dual of the tangent space, which is called cotangent space, and so we have a cotangent bundle, and the section of a cotangent bundle is a differential form. So now uh, what we want to do is to dualize everything we have said so far for um, vector fields and get to the differential forms. So let's start by defining the differential of a function. So we consider a, a function defined on the manifold <clears throat> uh, we assume that it is differentiable a certain number of time, times, at least one, because we have to differentiate it. And uh, let P be a point of M. Then we define a differential vf of p as a linear map from the tangent space in p to r so it's a linear map so we can say that in the language of linear algebra, it belongs to the dual of the tangent space, because it's a linear map on the tangent space. It is a specific linear map, which must be associated with um, the function f. Which linear map? Now we write it explicitly. So it's a map from the tangent to r. You have to take a derivation or a vector field in this case, it's sufficient to take a derivation because we are in a specific point P and say where it is mapped to. So let X be an element of the tangent space. We interpret it as a derivation. Then df is defined by so df should act on x because it acts on the derivations. That is simply x of f which is a linear map <clears throat> defined by this. <clears throat> More explicitly, in local coordinates, So let's write x equal to aix partial derivative respect to xi. And um, then x of f is a i x times the partial derivatives we are now in p so x is uh, 
vector field actually, but if we specify it in P, we have to calculate everything in P. And that is df of x. df of x is uh, given by this formula. So, uh, for example, let us take f equal xi, then we can, so this is a very simple uh, specific case, the simplest function we can take the coordinate xi, some coordinate, dxi of x is equal to what? Um, x of xi and that is just ai coefficients ai so um Okay, so df of x is equal to um, we can write it in the following form df over dxi in p times d x i of x let's forget about p this moment and drop x on both sides we can have the more familiar formula d f over d x i d x i And uh, uh, another thing we can, uh, another formula that is useful to write is dxi. Let's take as a vector field the derivation, the partial derivative with respect to the jth coordinate, which means that you have ai equal to 1 only for i equal to j basically this is the delta of ij so um, this formula for, uh, shows that uh, the dx size are a basis of T P star. T P star is called cotangent space in P, but we can easily extend it to an open set. And now we will see how they transform and from the transformation rules we can extend it with the entire manifold and build the cotangent space the cotangent bundle this is the cotangent cotangent space Okay, there is not much time for more things today, so we stop here.